Hey folks, I'm Emily Buck, Director of Communications at the TWRA, and today I'm joined by the host of Tennessee Wildcast, Jason Harmon, for this Field to Fork segment. Thanks for joining me, Jason. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, we got some fresh dove here from the dove hunt, and we're going to make pot pies, is that right? Absolutely. Today on the menu, dove pot pie. It's tasty, it's delicious. They come in individual little serving sizes, perfect for the whole family. Let's get going. So ingredients for a dove pot pie, very traditional if you've ever made a chicken pot pie. Again, poultry's poultry, mm -hmm. birds are birds. Um, so we're going to stick with kind of the basics here. So we've got here in front of us, Jason was an excellent prep chef. We have some chopped carrots, we've got chopped onions, chopped celery, of course some green peas, and our dove. Now for the dove, I went ahead and brined it in a light brine. A brine's really handy to get some moisture mm -hmm. into a bird. It also helps uh, if you have, if you don't love that gamey taste, a brine or a marinade really helps take wild game to the next level. Well, and I was gonna say, this is a little darker, a darker meat too. It's yeah. not your white meat chicken, but it, it will, it'll be great in this, this dish. Absolutely, and so I actually did a little hit of a hickory smoked marinade in with my brine. So a brine, for those of you at home who aren't familiar, is just water with salt and sugar. And the salt in that brine sucks the moisture out of the bird, puts it back in through osmosis, really ups the <laughs> flavor. Uh, that's a little cooking term for you there. So we've got some herbs, some garlic, we've got our little mini coquettes. And so we're gonna take all of these ingredients over to the stove and let's get cooking. All right, let's do it. All right, so we've got our pan here on medium heat. We're gonna start by adding our chopped celery to the pan. We're gonna let this start to cook down a little bit. That's about half a cup. Again, about a half cup of carrots. And really all of these measurements, you can do however much you need to feed your family. It's all very um, adjustable for however you need. Next up, we've got our onions going in. We're gonna let these guys saute a bit before we move on to the next. Okay, folks, now that we have our onions nice and translucent, we're gonna go ahead and add our next batch of ingredients. So we're gonna add here a helping teaspoon of garlic. Listen, when it comes to garlic, y'all, follow your heart. There's no such thing as too much garlic. We're also gonna go ahead and add in our peas. I prefer to use frozen peas over canned peas, uh, but really whatever you have or whatever you wanna use is just fine when it comes to these. The fresh frozen peas tend to just maintain a little bit more crunch, a little more crisp than a canned pea wood. Next up, we're gonna add our dove. Remember this dove had been marinating a little bit. So it's a little juicy, but that's just fun. We're gonna throw it in, let it start to cook off a little bit. These are small pieces and dove is lean, so it will not need to cook for very long at all. Okay, so now we're ready for our seasonings. We're gonna add ourselves Couple scoops here of salt. We've got thyme, rosemary, and some fresh ground pepper. Looking good. All right, Jason, we're gonna turn the heat down to simmer, to low, and we're gonna go ahead and start working on the roux or the sauce part of our pot pie. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our flour, and we're gonna give it a couple scoops here. And this flour will help thicken up our sauce. Now we already have some fat in the pan mm -hmm. uh, from the butter, 
but we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more as well. Let's go ahead and just mix this in so it doesn't get lumpy when we add our liquid. All right. And this is just some homemade chicken stock. Of course, store-bought is fine as well. Um, and we're gonna add enough to kind of cover here our veggies and meat. And this is gonna reduce down as well. And then last touch, a little more fat. We're gonna add a splash of cream and that really helps just make it delicious and creamy. So we're gonna let this cook down and then it's gonna be ready for our pastries, correct? That's right. So this sauce will thicken up. And so while we're letting it do that, let's go prep our little coquettes and get them ready for our pot pies. Sounds good, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> us working on the stovetop. So now's a really good time to go ahead and prep our little mini ramekins. These are eight ounce ramekins. They come with a lid. We're not going to use the lid today, but really any size ramekin you want to use for your family is just fine. You'll just want to adjust your ingredients to be able to fill these up. So you could do this in a larger pan if you wanted to, right? I do that all the time at home. I'll actually, in the brazier that I, we're using on the stovetop today, I'll actually lay one whole sheet of puffed pastry on top of that. Um, but for this size, it's actually pretty easy to get them to have little bitty toppers. It's very cute for presentation or for a party if you um, don't want to fool with serving. You want to be able to set one of these onto a little place setting. I usually turn it upside down just like that. Okay. And you'll see it leaves a little impression. Perfect. And this works out. So this is our sheet of puff pastry. It actually was folded into four quarters. So you can kind of see. And you'll want to cut a little bigger, a little bigger than okay. the impression so you have a little bit of extra space to seal it with. Gotcha. So quarter of an inch bigger? That's just fine. Any extra you can always go back and trim off. So it's better to leave it a little big and have extra to trim than to go too small and it not fit. Perfect. All right. I think I got it. Now with puff pastry, you want to look at work a little quick because the butter in this will start to melt. You're a great sous chef, Jason. My name's not Sue. <laughs> okay, perfect. So an easier way to get these out um, is actually just to sacrifice the scraps a little bit here. That's all right. We'll deal we'll with that. We'll sacrifice that little bit there. No problem. Okay. And we'll just set this aside. Um, I usually save this, make a little breakfast pastry, or um, you can make more pot pies with it. Should we go check the, the mixture? Let's go check it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and bring the heat up a little bit more so you can go ahead and start getting a little bit of bubbling going on. Now it's starting to simmer a little bit better and cook down a little bit. That's right. All right, I think that's about good. Okay. All right, Jason, this looks just right, so I'm gonna let you do the honors, carry it back over to our workstation, and we'll get ready to load up our ramekins. Perfect. Does look good. All right, Jason, you go ahead and fill those up. Leave about a three quarters of an inch at the top okay just uh so they don't bubble over when they're in the oven uh you'll have a mess in your oven if you fill them too full mm. uh, i like to place them on a baking sheet when i put them in the oven it makes them easier to pull in pull out and um actually let me go ahead and have just a tiny bit more a little bit more a little bit more please perfect thank you so then you're going to take your little puff pastry crust and you're gonna put it on the top and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna seal it down and you can kind of do a, a decorative crimp um, you can put little puff pastry art on top if you like um, but really what we're doing here is just sealing it to the edge so that it stays on and then we're gonna take our little knife here and we're gonna make 
a little bit of a, a vent hole. This is gonna let the liquid continue to cook off. It's gonna let the steam come out. That one's mine, by the way. It's got more meat in it. Oh, I see that <laughs> little bit of a favoritism from the prep chef, huh? Yeah. That's the good thing about cooking in the kitchen. Uh, you get to make it your way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So once we get the tops on, we're gonna cook these at, what, 350? We've got the oven preheating at 350, and you're gonna to wanna to cook for 15 to 20 minutes, or until this puff pastry is nice and golden brown. Keep an eye on it, because every oven is a little bit different. We're actually cooking in a convection oven, so it may go a little quicker, um, but just, just be sure you keep an eye on it so you don't burn your puff pastries. Okay, so our little vents are important. That lets the steam out uh, so that they can continue to cook off without exploding. Mm -hmm. um, and then our last step here, we're gonna take a little bit of this egg wash. This is just one egg with some water in it. And we're just gonna brush the tops of these. That helps it get nice and golden brown. It helps the edges stick. And you'll see, I just sort of take the fork and go around again. And that just helps with our seal. You also can do this with a pastry brush. I try to reduce the number of dishes I have to wash later, so I just use a fork. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, and then one last finishing touch. We're gonna add a sprinkle of sea salt on the top. I'll get it. So what's that do? Just adds flavor? Or it's gonna add a little bit of flavor. It's gonna add a little bit of texture on the top of the pastry crust. Uh, and really, it just helps it make, make it look pretty. So awesome. um, always helpful. So now we're gonna grab our baking sheet. We're gonna load this up and we're gonna head to the oven. All right, Jason, important job, don't drop it. I won't, <laughs> Okay. <promise. laughs> and we're off to the oven. Right in the center. That's good. All right. 15 to 20 minutes in a regular oven. This is a convection. It's going to cook a little bit faster. So we're going to keep an eye on it. And we'll clean up the kitchen a little bit while those work. Sounds good. Let's do it. You got to suit up. <laughs> OK, I'm going to open this door. And I think we're ready. All right. Let's do it. Wow. Look at that puff. <laughs> Fully puffed. <laughs> awesome. All right, folks, we're out of the oven. We've got four Dove puff pies here. Now you can see we've had a range of success with our puff pastry, and you know what? That's just fine if you're feeding your family. We had one that puffed up really beautifully. We've got two right in the middle, and then this one sunk a little bit, but I'll tell you what. It's still gonna eat it's good. It's gonna be just fine. Now, if you don't have any of these little ramekins at home, it's absolutely okay for you to make one full size one. So you saw we cut out the puff pastry. You actually can lay that puff pastry on top of the hole, still cut your vents in it so that the extra liquid can escape. Um, and the other thing that I do at home, if I don't have puff pastry, but I have regular pie crust, or if I feel like making a regular pie crust instead of a puff pastry, if I'm doing it from scratch, you actually can take the full-size pan and line it like you would a traditional pie. So you okay. can put the pie crust down on the bottom, fill it with your filling, and then add the pie crust on top. With these little cup cups, you don't really have quite enough space um, to, to line it. You could if you wanted to, if you like that extra bit of crust. Um, I'd rather have extra filling instead of extra crust. And then with this puff pastry, you only do that on top. You don't line that on the bottom because it, it wouldn't puff. Right. So you would only do the bottom lining with a traditional pie crust. Now, we think these have cooled just enough, so we're going <laughs> to risk it. Let's, let's, have a, let's have a taste. You go, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Ladies first. Make sure you get down in there and get some of that dove. Okay, there's a bite of dove right there. 
So you you didn't get any pastry with that bite. I'll have to go back for more. I don't think I'll complain about it. <laughs> there you go. There we go. What do you think? Great. All right, pretty tasty. Well, folks, if you're heading out into a dove field this season, maybe give our pot pie a try. Uh, dove dumplings, another great choice. And um, I've even heard some people suggest a dove fajita. Oh, very interesting. Maybe we'll work. try that next time. <laughs> All right, thanks for hanging out with us today as we made our dove pot pie. I'm Emily. This is Jason. Thanks for joining us. Happy cooking. <laughs>